start something to say uh, Happy New Year and um, let's get started. So a couple weeks ago, I talked about what you should know uh, when purchasing a HUD home. So this week, I wanted to talk about what you should know or what happens when a HUD transaction goes wrong and what you need to do. So let's get started. So once you've submitted your highest and best offer and your realtor comes back and tells you that you've um, won the award or won the bid on that property, what happens next? So um, fact number two, within a few days, HUD is going to send you their own contract, their own agreement of sale for this property, being as though that this property is a government property. They go by their own set of rules. So this contract will go to your realtor first. They will oversee everything to make sure all your information is correct. And then it goes, once it's correct, you know, they would submit it back to HUD. And then HUD is actually going to send you, you know, the contract. And you need to make sure you read over everything. It's about maybe 36 pages. You want to read over everything before you actually sign it. So, um, fact number three. So, once you've read everything, and then you're going to submit that back to um, HUD. But in the process, let me just say this. So, once you're reading everything, please make sure you read the part where they're talking about your earnest money deposit. Because in certain situations, when, you're, when you have a HUD property, um, they may not refund you your earnest money deposit. So you need to be aware of that. Make sure you read that and understand it. Make sure you, you know, talk about it with your realtor um, so you are aware of that before you actually, you know, agree and sign off on the documents. So um, fact number four. So once you signed off everything and everything goes back to HUD, um, then you want to get your house inspected and you want to get it appraised. So let's say you went through all that and let's say the appraisal on the property comes back less than what you submitted your offer. And this is where it can actually go a little left. So you have two options. Either option one is you're going to pay the difference of, let's say if you, the property was $65,000. let us say you submitted an offer that's over $80,000. Let's say the property was appraised 70 something. So you're going to have to come up with a difference because you submitted your offer at 80, whatever dollars, $85,000 or whatever. You would definitely have to come out your pocket the difference. If you didn't want to go that way, then you could either back out of the deal because I will tell you that your mortgage lender is not going to say, um, they're only going to approve you a mortgage for what that property was appraised for. So you would then in turn have to come out with a difference or back out of the deal. So fact number five. So let's fact number five, last but not least. So let's say you want to back out of the deal because you realize that you don't have enough money to pay the difference. You know, you have enough money for closing costs, but you don't have enough money to pay the difference for what you uh, submitted an offer for that property. And it's okay if you want to back out of the deal, but this is where it can actually go left because you want to reflect back on, I signed that contract, those 36 pages, and in there it talked about a non-refundable earnest money deposits and things like that. So that's what you want to make sure and be aware of once you uh, sign or once you want to move forward or back out of any HUD transactions. So um, you want to start the procedure. You'll let your realtor know, like, listen, I decided it's not going to work out. I need to back out of this deal. Your realtor, hopefully myself, will start the paperwork for you to be released out of that HUD property. And it's a few documents that you will have to fill out. And you, as the buyer, you're going to have to write a letter stating why you need to back out of that deal and to hopefully get your earnest money deposit back. And nine times out of 10, you know, um, your mortgage lender, because they're only going to 
uh, loan you what the appraised property is. So you, you may get a denial letter. It's not that you may, you should get a denial letter from the bank saying the reasons why you can't actually move forward in this transaction because they're only going to give you the money that that property was appraised for. So again, anytime you want to deal with HUD houses, um, foreclosures, um, REO properties, make sure you do your due diligence in finding out all the information that you can about these properties. Um, we're at an all time low as far as the interest rates. We're in a seller's market, so it's not that many properties available. So let's say if you do find a property, lots of times they are, they may be HUD houses and, and foreclosures, but make sure you do your own homework to find out everything that you need to know about these properties. And also make sure you have that good uh, relationship with your realtor and that you're upfront and honest with them. So those were my fun facts for today. If you liked anything that I've talked about or you want to know more information in regards to how to move forward with a HUD uh, property, please contact me. All my information is below. You can go to my website, www.tawanavalentine.com and fill out the information and I'll set you up with a free consultation. But before I go, please make sure that you like, share, and comment on this video. Again, by commenting on this video, you may be helping someone who is in a situation that they didn't uh, didn't know what to do um, in regards to a HUD home and wanting to back out of the deal. Make sure when you get these properties that you have a realtor that has that knows a lot about uh, HUD homes and foreclosure homes. So that was it for this week, guys. Join me next week for another Friday's Fun Fact at Five. Bye.